is time for round three of American Horror Story Apocalypse. This new episode is called Forbidden Fruit, and I actually think it might be my favorite episode yet, just maybe not for all the right reasons. Let's kick this off with a little recapping here. We open up with a montage that's got a good deal of exposition in it. Michael Langdon is busy having more private chats, and we learn that he's looking for the seeds that'll make the future of mankind blossom, I guess in his own specific way. He's also got some sort of night vision of the soul. He can see the dark places people keep hidden, but in Coco's case, uh, she's too shallow for any meaningful negativity. And apparently, Dinah Stevens and Michael Langdon have met before, and then Mallory explains that sometimes she feels there's someone buried inside of her trying to claw their way out, and perhaps that someone had a little something to do with uh, her igniting a big fire in the room and making Michael Langdon turn on his scary face there. After that, Michael does some sort of blood ritual and says something about thinking he destroyed them all. He asks for a little help, he gets some snakes, and those are going to come back into play in a little bit. But first, we go back to the past for Mead's backstory that actually doesn't really exist because she's a robot. In the present, Mead and Venable decide that they don't trust Langdon, so they've got to take matters into their own hands, and Mead suggests just killing everyone. That's made easier for the two of them in a couple of ways. First, Brock is still alive, and he's not happy that Coco had left him behind. He manages to sneak into the facility and stab Coco in the head. She's done. On top of that, the carriage he sneaks in on is carrying a giant case of apples, something the residents of Outpost 3 would just be foaming at the mouth for. But remember those snakes? Venable and Mead opt to pump those wonderful apples full of snake venom, and they just wipe out all the residents of Outpost 3 in a really nasty death scene. Once everyone there is good and dead, Venable and Mead head to Langdon's room with a plan to kill him too, but much to Venable's surprise, it turns out Mead's been his robot all along and he gets Mead to shoot Venable. Apparently, Langdon told the cooperative R&D department to have Mead constructed based on someone from his childhood, and I am betting that someone is Constance Langdon, Jessica Lang's character from season one Murder House. As if Losing the large majority of the new main characters this season isn't enough. Then we get what I think is the best reveal of the episode, the witches from Coven, specifically Cordelia, Madison, and Myrtle. They find their sisters in Outpost 3 and bring them back to life. So now we've got Mallory, Dinah, and Coco all back again with the witches from Coven. A couple of minor things that stuck out to me first. Uh, perfect timing and planning there for that Dark Phoenix reference, Fox. I love the relentlessly boring young people line because Mead basically read my mind there when it comes to Timothy and Emily. And also, I really do hope that Mead gets to say, I'm a goddamn robot a couple more times this season. And speaking of Mead, one might expect to be maybe a little frustrated thinking of all those memories we saw and knowing that they're not real, but those pop culture references are just so spot on and also show in character appropriate, it's hard to not enjoy them. And that fight scene is also exceptionally well shot and choreographed there. And again, Michael does mention that she was constructed based on someone from his childhood and if it is Constance, maybe Mead has some of her memories in her as well. Also, Kathy Bates is just fantastic in that scene with Mead, Venable, and Langdon. With a performance like that, I for one am very convinced that American Horror Story robots have feelings. But going back to that big death scene, did this show just kill off most of its main characters? I know folks like Sarah Paulson get to come back in other roles, but after spending all that time with people like Gallant, Timothy, and Emily, is that just it? I can't say I was all that interested in seeing where things were going with Timothy and Emily specifically, but I would be a little annoyed, I guess, if we went through those three episodes with them for pretty much nothing. Even Venable feels like she got a cut a little short here. She was easily one of the more interesting characters of the bunch. Is this really the end of her, or is there more to Langdon telling her that she passed his test? And speaking of the interviews and that test, was all of that for nothing? Was Langdon really trying to pinpoint the individuals who would make mankind blossom? Or is the sanctuary maybe just another name for the afterlife? 
I hope there's more to it because otherwise it's just another thing that I guess I feel like it got cut off way too abruptly. But the thing is, if we have to trade almost all of what we've been building the last three episodes for the Coven Witches, I think I'm okay with it. I hadn't really taken to any of the new characters here anyway, and if we have Cordelia, Madison, and Myrtle step in and breathe new life into characters like Coco, Mallory, and Dinah, that's fine by me. If I had to make a guess right now, I'd bet on the season progressing in a way that makes the first three episodes, and I guess the 18 months spent in the outpost, feel kind of meaningless, but if the trade-off is an epic showdown between the Witches of Coven and the Cooperative to decide the fate of mankind, it really could be a worthwhile severe left turn there. So that's it, guys. That's my recap and review of American Horror Story Apocalypse Episode 3, Forbidden Fruit. You know what to do. Share your thoughts and your theories in the comments section below. Next weekend is New York Comic Con, so the review for episode four might be even more delayed than usual, but you can bet that once I am home sweet home again, I'll get you that review. I'll see you guys soon.